What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. And this is gonna be my in-depth analysis of Summer Claude, Dimitri and Micaiah. And I'll be going over the best builds that you can run on them for different game modes. So let us begin with Summer Claude. And he is the 4 star focus unit of this banner, which makes him a really popular merch project. So he's a 172 BST, blue dagger flyer with frozen delight as his preferred weapon. This does have the Fortray skill built into it, so it does provide him with the Kanto remaining movement. So it is not going to be as good as a flat Kanto that we have seen on E3. So basically the remaining movement of Claude is going to be added to his Kanto. So still this could be helpful for retreating. And this does provide him with minus one special cooldown. So Moonbow becomes a one turn special. And if he's within two spaces of an ally, or if he initiates combat, then he can get plus 6 attack and speed in the combat, and he can get the player phase brave effect if the total bonuses on him and the total penalties on the opponent is equal to 12 or more. So this is a pretty easy condition to meet so that he can get the brave effect, he can just buff him up with some tactic skills or just debuff the opponent with some ally. But unfortunately against the foes which have both debuff neutralization and debuff neutralization, Claude is not going to be able to get the brave hit on them. For example, Ascended Idun with her base kit pretty much does that, so you'll have to watch out for those kinds of opponents. But in general, he's going to be able to get this pretty consistently and nuke really hard with this brave effect and his amazing offenses for a 4 star focus. So he's got base 38 attack which is pretty nice and base 42 speed having super boon in it. So this can be really helpful for quad attacking and he does get the damage reduction from fallen star so he can survive a lot of combats but unlike legendary claude he doesn't really have access to null follow up so the auto follow up weapons of the enemies can still kill him. So a fallen star is here from legendary claude which does provide him with the 80% damage reduction in the player phase and after the combat it does inflict gravity effect on the target and foes within fun space of that target. So the fallen star effect can pretty much give you the 80% damage reduction on the first combat in the enemy phase and player phase. So this can give him better survivability even though he's mainly a player phase focus unit and he's going to be relying on his player phase brave effect to really nuke hard. Nonetheless, range flyers don't really have too many good options and Fallen Star is definitely a pretty nice option on a 4 star focus unit. So on average it is going to be taking around 400 to 500 orbs if you want to plus and merge him. I did get him at mid merge myself so I'm a big Claude fan and I'm going to be plus and merging him as well. And he does provide you with some nice fodder in speed defense train as well if you do summon him. So this could be useful on any kind of offensive flyer. Overall Summer Claude is easily one of the best if not the best 4 star focus unit that we have seen on any kind of seasonal banner yet. Not only has got a preferred weapon but also Fallen Star and obviously he's not going to be as good as Legendary Claude because he does have that um, you know, null follow up in his weapon and also has the inherent value as a Legendary unit but still Summer Claude is a pretty fantastic unit for a 4 star focus and also for a fan favorite that a lot of people are going to plus in merging. So on a budget you can simply run Fury 3 on him and you can also run Death Blow if you want to and Blade Session is going to be giving you the maximum offenses and it is pretty much the best sacred seal for Claude. If you plan on plus and merging him then you can definitely give him some more expensive skills because he's mainly going to be functioning in the player phase with that brave effect. You can give him some Sparrow 3 and this could definitely help him quite a bit. You can also run Sturdy Impact at max investment. It doesn't really give him the extra speed but Sturdy Impact does give him the ability to survive against the slower units who have auto follow up. And with Fallen Star and his damage reduction, it definitely gives him much better player phase survival so that he can at least live because he doesn't have the null follow up like Legendary Cloth. So Sturdy Impact is really helpful in the player phase for that survival. Just keep in mind that it doesn't really give you any kind of extra speed. So I only would recommend this at higher investment, especially if you have plus speed IV. Plus speed IV is a super boon so I do like it quite a lot but if you can you can ascend both attack and speed at max investment and uh, because he doesn't have null follow up in his weapon he can definitely appreciate the support of null follow up from fallen Lilith if you do have her and this is the kind of max investment build that you can run on Claude and you can also run lethality as a 3 cooldown special 
because you can quad attack and he has got this kind of brave weapon, you can still charge it up. And if you really want to, you can also run Heavy Blade Sacred Seal. But I personally just like to stack up his offenses so that he can hit really hard with his brave effect. And Lethality is pretty much the premium option that you can run on him. So having the Null follow up from Fallen Lilith allows you to quad attack even some of the tanks which have follow up negation. And because he doesn't have the native Null follow up in his weapon like Laser and Claude, this kind of support is extremely appreciated and definitely solidifies his new king potential. Attack Speed Catch is a fantastic slot, a skill which can provide him with the maximum offenses and it does have good synergy with the gravity effect of the Fallen Star because the gravity effect is essentially a penalty on the opponent. So if, even without running a Menace skill, you can technically take the advantage of the full cat skill and still run a rain skill. So that's why at max investment, this is definitely something you can run and I've already foddered off the Farina I had to my Summer Claude and I've been having a lot of fun with this kind of max investment build. You can also use him in Arena at max investment with B-Duel Flying 4. And because of having Fallen Star as a 300 SP slot B skill, he actually scores like a 185 BST unit. So he does score more than most of the ranged flyers and flying units because of having Fallen Star. And that is just the cherry on top. So you can run a 300 SP slot C skill for the max scoring. And Speed Defense Menace is pretty much going to be the best option here. Um, from Summer Dimitri, but you can also run some other menace skills or even join drive attack So it's kind of flexible and Ruptured Sky does become a one turn special So you can trigger that on your second hit and that is gonna be helping you a lot for demolishing a lot of opponents in arena You can still run lethality if you want to but I do like the practical application of Ruptured Sky a lot more in arena than Lethality which is gonna be having higher cooldown and you cannot really you know trigger that on your second hit and you can also use him in Aetherite's offense with Double Fury build so that you can make him into a Wings of Mercy beacon. So something like this could be done in Aetherite's Chaos Season and with Disarm Trap, he can basically go over the Heavy Traps and the Bold Traps and just snipe the opponents. But keep in mind that a lot of the far safe tanks are going to be able to stop him, especially Brave Hectors and such. But if the opponent is not using a far safe unit, then it is going to be pretty easy for him to just set up the Wings of Mercy beacon. And Fallen Star is pretty good, but he's mainly there as a nuke. So Disarm Trap actually helps you a lot more in Aetherite's offense so that you can be immune to those Bolt and Heavy Traps. Hex Traps are still going to be annoying but Disarm Trap's utility is just way too good in Aetherite's offense. So he is pretty much going to be functioning like a Blue Ninja Lin at this point when you take off his Fallen Star and you run this kind of build. It's just that he's lacking the dual skill of Ninja Lin uh, but still if you want to use him for Aetherite's offense and if you really like him then this could be an option to set up your Wings of Mercy allies and Gale Forcinas to teleport and just uh, player phase the enemy's team. Summer Dimitri is an Axe Cavalier this time and he has got Unyielding Ore as his preferred weapon. So this does have Neotrace built into it, which means that he has got Kanto remaining plus one movement. So whatever movement he's going to be having left is going to be added to his Kanto. So it is again not a flat Kanto like Otter or Regan. But still having that Kanto is really good because he's going to be running Atrocity in his slot base so he doesn't really have to miss out on a Neotrace skill. This weapon does give him minus on special cooldown and if he's at or above 25% HP then he can get plus 5 to all of his stats and he can also get the dual phase brave effect if any kind of bonus is active on the foe or if he has got 10 or more speed than the opponent. So this condition is definitely pretty flexible because if the foe is faster and if they have a bonus, he can still get the brave hit and ultimately having 10 or more speed than the opponent is going to be solidifying your brave effect. So it's pretty easy to stack up all of the speed on Dimitri, especially with his base 40 speed and the super boon that he has got. And he also has massive base 42 attack stat. And this is pretty insane with the fact that he has got Atrocity of Legendary Dimitri. So Atrocity does give you true damage based on 25% of his attack. And after combat, it does have the Spectrum Smoke built into it and also the Pulse Smoke effect. So this is really good for debuffing the foes for all of their stats and even for their special cooldown count. So this can just annoy a lot of hardy fighter armors or pre-charged special units and they can just lose the specials which they had pre-charged. So this does give him really amazing niche as a cavalier because he can go in and just debuff the opponents and then get out with the Kanto remaining plus one built into his weapon. So Summer Dimitri pretty much combines some of the best aspects of Fallen Dimitri and Legendary Dimitri. He has got the atrocity of Legendary Dimitri and he has got the Kanto of Fallen Dimitri. The only thing he's missing is kind of the fire sweep effect which Fallen Dimitri has got. 
But still, a lot of people do run Ninja Naginata on Fallen Dimitri just so that he can get the quad attacks. I do use him myself in Light Season, but this kind of Summer Dimitri is pretty much an upgrade because he can hit so hard with that true damage and still get the Kanto remaining plus one. And Atrocities debuffs are going to be so helpful for your allies as well. He does come with Speed Defense Menace, which is an amazing uh, slotsy skill for any kind of offensive unit that wants to run this kind of Menace skill with a Cat skill or maybe with an Ideal skill. So Menace skills are definitely pretty nice and this does complete the family of the Menace skills. Overall, I would say that Summer Dimitri is easily the second best unit on this banner after Summer Edelgard. Summer Edelgard is just very unique, honestly, and she is the best player phase armor. I have made a separate video on her if you want to check that out. But yeah, Summer Dimitri is extremely, extremely powerful. Having a dual phase brave weapon with 16 might that has got Kanto built into it and also gives him minus one special cooldown. So he's going to be really useful in Aether Raids, in Summoner Duels, in Aether Raids Defense, in the in-game content, Arena Assault, pretty much in most game modes. He's going to be extremely, extremely powerful with his high attack, the true damage, and this kind of dual phase brave weapon. So very impressive unit, honestly, and easily a top tier Axe Cavalier. So on a budget on Summer Dimitri, you can just run Reposition and have Attack Speed Solo because he does get the dual phase brave weapon, having a dual phase sacred seal like Attack Speed Solo is pretty nice. Now because he has got such a high damage output, he can kind of skip on having a damaging special and simply run Gale Force and Heavy Blade. So Heavy Blade does have an easier time triggering because of his high attack stat and the fact that he can get the debuffs with Atrocity and Gale Force becomes a 4 turn special. So with his Brave Hits, he can actually trigger this in a single round of combat if the opponent does not die to a single hit of his. And he can still bring down Gale Force to 2 cooldown if you run him with someone like Veluria for example. So that could always be done. And you can also run him with Speed Smoke 4 at higher investment, especially if you want to use him in Summoner Duels S or R. And this can definitely make him a pretty tanky unit by giving him that damage reduction. And, uh, you know, Legendary Dimitri is known for running Speed Smoke 4, Vital Astra and all of that. Unfortunately, Summer Dimitri has no access to Vital Astra. And just like Summer Claude, he does appreciate the support of Fallen Lilith so that he can get that Null follow-up. And that Null follow-up is definitely going to be helpful defensively, especially with the damage reduction that he can get out of Speed Smoke. So this is going to be a pretty annoying build to go up against in uh, Summoner Duel's RNS, just because of the fact that how hard he can hit. And then he has got Kanto. And then he can also have better longevity because of having the damage reduction, which he can get out of his Thoughtsy skill. Like I said, I do use Fallen Dimitri quite a lot with Winter Bernadetta in the light season for the Gale Force team. And Summer Dimitri is an extremely powerful unit with the consistent 3 movement. And he also has the Brave Hits, so you don't have to run Ninja Naginata like I do on Fallen Dimitri. And his weapon is enough here. So you can just run him with Winter Bernadetta as the most reliable way of falling into the Wings of Mercy range. So with Ardent Sacrifice, you can fall into the Wings of Mercy range. And Winter Bernadetta does do that one damage to the allies, which can allow you the usage of Ardent Sacrifice. So that is one of the best ways of setting up Wings of Mercy and Gale Force allies. He does have a minus HP Super Bane, so that can actually help you. Um, and because he does have that HP threshold in his weapon, it's much better to set up Gale Force this way so that he can be at that 50% HP and then just go in and do the Brave Hits. And he can still maintain his HP condition of his weapon. And his slot C is kind of flexible here because, um, you know, Menace skills are not really all that great for Aether Raid's offense. And you don't really want to run Savage Blow because the Atrocity does depend on foe's HP. And it also has anti-synergy with the Cat skill. So that's why you can just run Drive Attack, honestly, if you want to. And Heavy Blade with Gale Force here is going to be really helpful so that you can uh, trigger that Gale Force into hits. And supporting him with Veluria and her new Weapon Refine is going to be one of the best things that he can do so that he can trigger Gale Force on his one hit and that can be a really nice one tap guild for setup so i can definitely vouch for this kind of summer dimitri build for guild force teams as someone who has used fallen dimitri so much in the light season this is definitely an upgrade and i wish that i could get him and even against a lot of the near safe tanks he's going to be demolishing them and in ether raids defense you can just focus on his attack stat not so much on the speed because uh, most foes are going to be buffing up their tanks and units, so it's pretty easy to trigger that brave hit from his weapon from the uh, other condition. So you can simply run this kind of build, 
and at max investment he could be run in arena and just like etherate's defense it's pretty easy to trigger his brave effect here because most people in arena do run visible buffs and the rally skills so with G-Dual Cavalry 4, he can score as a 185 BST unit because of having Atrocity which does score 300 SP and he can just run his default menace skill as well. Overall, the speed boon is going to be his main boon which you should be focusing on so that he can solidify his uh, brave hits but in the game modes where you know that the foes are going to be using the visible buffs then the attack boon can also work. Summer Micaiah is a colorless mage cavalier this time with Moonlight Drop as her preferred weapon. It of course has the trademark effective damage against armored and cavalry units and she does get minus one special cooldown. So a two turn cooldown special like Moonbow or Ruptured Sky does become one cooldown. And if she initiates combat or if she's within two spaces of an ally, then she can get plus six attack and resistance in combat. And then she has got an in combat resistance check. And depending on the extra resistance that she has got compared to the opponent, she can get two different effects. So if she has got 5 to 14 extra resistance than the opponent, then she can get a guaranteed follow up attack. But if she has got 15 or more resistance than the opponent, then she can get the player phase brave effect. So this can be a really powerful thing for taking out a lot of units and nuking them really hard. But the problem is that Micaiah's resistance is not the highest. It is base 37 and it is going to be good enough to get the brave hit against a lot of the units. But keep in mind that a lot of the far safe tanks which are good in this game can easily reach about like 50 to 60 resistance. So against them, the bulkiest tanks, Micaiah is going to be struggling to get the player phase brave effect that she has got. And even though she's got the prescience to get the damage reduction, um, it is still going to be pretty hard for her to survive a lot of the physical hits from the distant counter armor units because of her low defense and her HP. So prescience does help from Legendary Micaiah for giving her the attack and resistance debuff on the opponent. It certainly helps with the resistance check in her weapon. And it does provide her with the 30% damage reduction as well. And her base attack is pretty high at base 42, also having the super boon. And she has got unusually high speed for this kind of unit who relies on her resistance to get the brave hit. She doesn't really get her extra speed from her weapon or anything like that. So this speed is kind of weird honestly having this kind of middling speed at base 30. It doesn't really serve too much of a purpose other than piercing through some of the follow-up negation effects if she gets the auto follow up. Um, and I wish that these points actually went to her resistance so that she can have a more consistent brave effect. But nonetheless, overall, Summer Micaiah is still going to be a solid nuke and she is a cavalry unit with this kind of effective damage and this kind of player phase brave hit. So she's still going to be functioning as a really solid nuke and because of being a colorless unit, she's going to be hitting hard to pretty much all of the tanks that she's going to be initiating against. And there's also the fact that Deflect Magic Sacred Seal is pretty common because of Winter Lysithia and Ninja Corrin being present in the metagame way before Summer Micaiah. So Deflect Magic is another obstacle in her path for killing a lot of the far safe tanks, even if she's able to get the extra 15 resistance compared to her foes. So those things are to be kept in mind while using Summer Micaiah and using her for the nuking. If you want to use her on a budget, then you can run a smoke skill in her slot seat so that it can have good synergy with the cat skill uh, that she has got. And you can also run attack resistance solo because keep in mind that you need to stack up as much resistance as you can uh, with Micaiah so that she can get her brave hit. That is going to be the main priority of Micaiah. So anything that can help her with that is going to be much welcome. You can also run her with attack resistance menace and this can help you get the 12 point stat differential between the opponent's resistance and Micaiah's resistance. So this can definitely help you get that brave effect a lot easily and you can just run glimmer as her special because we are debuffing the opponent's resistance pretty hard and her default moonbow is nice but at this point when she's going to be nuking really hard and then she's got effective damage, glimmer becomes a really good special as well. You can also run her in Summoner Duels, especially in Summoner Duels S, where she can function as a good nuke for one of the teams. And I would say that compared to Prescience, uh, I like Fortress skill a lot more on Summer Micaiah, even though it does provide her with the less debuffs and also does not have damage reduction. Still, the Kanto effect is pretty nice because compared to the other summer units present here like Dimitri and Claude, she doesn't really have a trace skill in her weapon. So the fact that she can retreat as a Cavalier is going to be helping you quite a lot in summer duels especially. 
So you can run that over Prescience. And Paltmo could also be run here because it will help you against the armors who run Hardy Fighter or against the foes which have pre-charged specials. So Paltmoke is a fantastic skill against a lot of foes in Summoner Duels. And Ruptured Sky becomes a one turn special. And Ruptured Sky is especially really good against um, Far Save Ascended Duns or Far Save Fallen Rhea. Because, you know, Fallen Rhea, a unit like her, does have that damage reduction with her true dragon wall. And some might even run the Hardy Fighter Aegis. So having Ruptured Sky trigger on her second hit can definitely help you against those kinds of dragons. And you can get that 40% damage from Ruptured Sky against those kinds of dragons and beast units. Summer Mikaya could also be used in Aetherate's defense for nuking really hard. I do like her a lot more in the Anima season where you can run Mirabilis to boost up her resistance and the opponents are not going to be running someone like Air who can provide them extra resistance. So I do like her a bit more in that season and you can easily run Lull Attack Resistance so that you can have a better matchup against the units who are going to be buffing themselves up. And especially if they use Elamine, then Elamine does have the resistance buff from her weapon itself. So the Lull skill ends up becoming pretty good for Aether Raid's defense. And then finally at max investment, she could be run with Sea Duel Cavalry 4. Easily one of the best recipients of this dual skill because of her nuking potential and the fact that she can score as a 185 BST Colorless Mage Cavalier. Thanks to Prescience being a 300 SP slot B skill. So all of the summer units here have these 300 SP slot B skill and you want to run 300 SP slotty and slots of skills so that they can get their max scoring. And Maiden Solace is pretty much harsh command plus, so it does help quite a lot and can also provide the healing to your allies in a pinch. Overall, this banner has got solid units all around, and Summer Edelgard and Summer Demetri are really, really powerful. And even the Forcer Focus unit of this banner, Summer Claude, is also very solid. And again, Summer Mikaya having that effective damage is always going to be good. So I hope you all enjoyed this banner review. If you did, then make sure to share this video with your friends if they're trying to build up any of these units. And if you enjoyed, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using Super Thanks or by becoming a YouTube member down below. And for more fave videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as Blue Near Safe Tanks against Summer Dimitri. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.